Yes. Beautiful. Love watching Dave Ruffin dancing around and singing. What a beautiful voice. Rick Fortner filling in for Pastor David Smith. Thank you so much. And Teresa and Dion just singing beautiful voices, just beautiful people. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful morning. And, and I, and I want to have a grown-up conversation about lying. This isn't, the norm, this isn't the normal conversation you would have in a church about lying. The commandment is clear. We know there's 10 commandments that we know of, and we can't remember them all, but one that we do remember is thou shalt not lie. And yet we all lie. Why do we do it? We do it it to protect people. We do it to protect ourselves. We do it because we don't want to hurt someone else's feelings. We do it because we're scared of the consequences of telling the truth sometimes. Mm -hmm. We do it because we think that someone else can't handle the truth and we know better. Sometimes we do it for personal gain or we do it to avoid personal loss. We do it because we all make mistakes, sometimes big mistakes, and we don't want other people to know about it or we don't want to have to suffer the consequences of what we've done. We do it in part because sometimes we've told the truth in the past and we live to pay for it from the response that we got from other people. And so after a while, you start learning, maybe I'm just going to kind of keep it to myself. Sometimes we lie because we think it's the most loving thing to do. Now, the outcome of all of this is that we live in an era where trust is at an all-time low. Seems to be anyway. And any society that has such little trust in their government, in their religious leaders, in their judicial system, in their criminal justice system, in law enforcement, and banks, and businesses, is a society whose social fabric is coming apart at the seams. Now, if you know me, you know that I advocate for a healthy distrust of authority. Except yours, right? Even my own. Don't believe it just because I say it. Believe it because you know it's true in your own heart. But when distrust become so endemic that suspicion is pervasive and it's become a default to distrust everybody and everything around us, there's an erosion of the possibility for community and for relationships on all levels. So it makes me want to stand up here this morning and just be super clear to say honesty is always the best policy. Thou shalt not lie, that all lying is immoral, all lying is wrong, and yet... If we're going to have an adult conversation about lying, I have to say there are times when it seems that lying is the right thing to do. What do we do when lying feels like it's the right thing to do? It's a, it's a tricky business. It's a slippery slope. And yet, when we think about it, sometimes it feels lying may be the best and right thing to do. Now first let's, before I get into this, let's talk a little bit about why it's become so endemic in our culture for people to lie and feel okay about lying. Part of it is because we have come up with such nice names for lying. We, you know, we don't lie anymore, we massage the truth. It sounds so nice and healthy, like to massage, I like a good massage. Why wouldn't the truth want a little massage once in a while? We we like to offer the truth from a favorable perspective. Or we like to engage in selective disclosure. <laughs> Creative enhancement. Nuanced truth. Or strategic misrepresentation. I think my favorite is when we call it poetic truth. Okay. It sounds so artistic. You know, I'm not a liar. I'm just more of a poet. We bend the truth, we shade the truth, we shave the truth, we stretch it a bit. 
our, our current uh, preferred term now is to say, I'm not being dishonest, it's just a little spin. Especially the politicians like to spin. It's truth enhanced. It's truth on steroids. <laughs> 2.0, true 2.0. It's, you know, there was a recent New Yorker cartoon where the, there was an employee who was talking to his boss. He says, I wasn't lying. I was just contextualizing. <laughs> we have all kinds of good names for how we dress things up. And the politicians love to dress up policies to make them sound like they're something that they're not. Uh, we don't wage war. We wage peace. We, uh, in the last presidency, we had the, uh, we had the president eased environmental controls over big business to relieve the responsibility and liability for polluting the air. And paradoxically, this legislation was called the Clean Air Act. We had a, a policy that increased private logging and profiting from logging on national lands, and it was called the Healthy Forest Initiative. Fox News claims to be fair and balanced. <laughs> These are just some of the many kinds of duplicity and deception and dishonesty that we experience every day of our lives. We can give it a fancy name, call it what you want, but lying in every single world religion is said to be wrong. In the sixth chapter of Proverbs, in the book of Hebrews, it reads, there are six things doth the Lord hates, and it includes a lying tongue and the hands that shed innocent blood. In the book of Revelations, in the Christian scriptures, liars are placed among the worst of society. It reads, the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. We see this in the Buddhist scriptures, the Hindu scriptures, the Muslim scriptures. We see Confucius talks about liars. He says, I don't know what use any man is whose word cannot be trusted, says Confucius. Yet still, still, if we're honest, there are times when it seems like lying is still the right and best thing to do. I mean, let's think about it. If I were harboring a Jew during World War II and the Nazis came to the door and knocked on the door and said, do you have any Jews in your home? It would be the right and ethical thing to do to lie. If, if a, you're hiding your friend from an abusive drunk spouse who comes to your door with a gun and asks if she's there, it's the right thing to do to say she's not. So there are times when lying can save somebody's life or keep somebody from harm. So here we go. Exception number one. Watch out. The slippery slope begins. And yet, who would argue that lying in these situations isn't the right thing to do? If a child with an unpleasant appearance asks, Mommy, am I beautiful? What purpose would it serve other than to crush the child's self-esteem to answer the question honestly? There was a, I was reading an article, I was in the New York Times right around the new year, and it said, it was, it it was titled, 10 Lies That Most Everyone Would Agree Are Okay to Tell. These included, when a car salesman asks you the maximum you're prepared to spend, Is it okay to lie? Your relative has severe dementia, and every time you leave and say, I'm, I'm leaving, he gets very angry, very agitated, and very sad, and it takes the staff sometimes an hour or two to calm him down after you leave. So you decide to just say, I'll see you in a minute, as you walk out knowing that he will forget in a few minutes that you were even there. Is it wrong or is it the loving and compassionate thing to do to lie? Lies, lies, lies. So a woman interviewing for a job who's asked, are you planning to have a family anytime soon? Might choose to lie 
in order to have the opportunity to get the job. In an effort, uh, in anti-discrimination efforts, we send out testers. So we send out two African Americans to pretend like they're a couple with a, some kids to go try to rent an apartment, followed by a, two white folks pretending to be a couple to see if they're treated equitably. Lying, deception, but we'd all agree it's the right thing to do. The point is that the ethics of lying is not as simple as we often think and say it is. And the truth is that we all lie sometimes. And the question is, are all lies a sin? I want to have an adult conversation today about lying. I once asked my good friend and my colleague from Temple Israel, Rabbi Charles Sherman, what the rabbis say to people about lying. And he said that they absolutely agree that to save somebody's life or to save somebody from harm, it's okay to lie. Exception number one to the rule, like the Nazi at the door, the abusive husband at the door. Then I asked, what about these little white lies that we call white lies? White lies are okay lies, apparently. So uh, white lies, you know, and so the rabbi said, well, we have a way of dealing with that as well, and it comes from the scriptures. Like, uh, you know, these white, when I say white lies, just so that everyone knows what I'm talking about, it's when somebody comes to you and they're wearing the ugliest dress you've ever seen in your life and they say, what do you think about my dress? And you say, it's nice. Right? So the rabbi said, the, what they look to is the story of when Abraham and Sarah in Genesis, when God announces to Sarah that she will bear a child, she laughs. Now it's a scoffing kind of a laugh, which is no doubt born of her anger and her disappointment and her longing of many decades. And she says, now, now that I am withered and I am to have enjoyment and with my husband so old? Now clearly God is annoyed at Sarah's response. And God says to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I in truth bear a child being so old? Well, that, of course, is not exactly what Sarah said. God has left out the part about Sarah laughing, saying, Shall I have enjoyment with my husband so old? <laughs> Did God lie? The rabbis tell us that God chose how and what to report to Abraham in order that Abraham would not feel bad about himself or become angry with Sarah. God did so, he suggested, to create peace in the household. In other words, even God sometimes softens the truth in the interest of peace among people. The principle here is that honesty is absolutely a virtue, but there are times and situations when Peace in the home or love between people becomes a higher virtue. Like Aristotle talks about virtues have a sort of hierarchy and some virtues are more important than others. And sometimes telling the full and honest truth is not as high a virtue as keeping the peace among people. So even we have a biblical reference or, or reference point for answering the question, how, do, how does my butt look in these jeans? <laughs> now, another example, though, of if we're, if we're talking about this, because if we're having an adult conversation about lying, let's talk about gossip. Sometimes you know something, some real gossip, a real truth about somebody, and it rarely is a good thing to do to go telling other people about that truth, even if they ask. For, for ministers, for doctors, even for friends, keeping somebody's confidence sometimes requires us to, to not say something that we know is true or to even, to, even to engage in a slight bit of uh, deception, being asked if we know something and saying that we don't in order to protect somebody's confidence. So there's lots of ways in which we all would agree that Lying sometimes 
is the right thing to do. And yet, it is such a slippery slope to even say that. I mean, for a minister to get into the pulpit and say, you know, there are times when it's okay to lie, it's a risky thing. And, and you have to be talking to adults, people who can handle a real conversation about the subject so that we can really talk about what matters and why it matters. Because there is a lot of moral ambiguity, a lot more than a proverb or one statement out of Scripture can, can give us all that we need to know to live in every situation and, and a, a consistency that is just built for consistency's purpose. To follow a commandment just because it's a commandment is not to be a righteous person. And Jesus came to teach us that. When Jesus healed people during the Sabbath in particular, you know, there were those who argued, what are you doing? And Jesus said, the, the law is not here to, uh, to keep us, to allow us to harm people. Sometimes people need to be healed. It's the Sabbath. The law is, is here as a guide for us, but it's not something that we need to follow in every situation. So, Jesus taught us that, that to follow the laws just for the law's sake does not make sense. The, the Good Samaritan story is another one where, where Jesus tells the, the story of a, a priest walking down the road and he sees a man. It's another Jew who's, who's been beat up and bloody on the side of the road. And he not only does this, it's like me being your minister, seeing you lying on the side of the road. Not only does he pass by and not help, he crosses over and passes on the other side of the road. What was Jesus trying to say? Well, in those times, in, in the religion, the priests had to stay away from blood before going into the temple. So he was following the law because he was headed for the temple and Jesus was saying absolutely not the religious thing to do. The right thing to do was to be compassionate and loving and help the person not to follow the law for the law's sake. It's the difference between the spirit of the law and the letter of the law. So Jesus gave us an ethic of loving our neighbors, loving God. Jesus did not bring a gospel of legalism and logical consistency. Our ethics and our actions, they should always be guided by this example of God's love, trying to do everything we can to live up to this ethic of love that Jesus provided for us. Nevertheless, we should, so, so there is moral ambiguity. There are times when it can make sense to lie, and yet we need to do everything we can to try to not to lie to be honest, to be courageous about it, to build trust, to trust people with the truth in all those ways because it is the right thing to do in almost every situation and, and it's easy to not do it because we're cowards about the res uh, because we don't want to have to handle the reaction because we're being selfish or for other reasons. Those are not acceptable reasons to lie. There are times when it can be the loving and compassionate thing to do, but when we create, when we open this up, we create what could be seen as a slippery slope so that an innocuous lie to your spouse about her blouse could then lead to lies about other things and eventually an erosion of trust and a lack of, of intimacy between people because we can't trust them. You, you should have heard all the people coming out of the traditional service this morning saying, oh, great sermon, Pastor. Oh, love that sermon. I didn't know whether they were telling me the truth or not, you know, because I just told them it was okay to tell a little lie once in a while. <laughs> so don't feel you need to uh, lie to me when, when we leave the service this morning. The thing is that the stakes are very high. The, the thing is, most people come to this church, come to All Souls, because they want to live an honest life. They don't want to pretend they believe things that they don't believe. They don't want to pretend to be something they're not, if they're gay, if they're lesbian, if they're this or if they're that. They want to be who they are. They want to be loved for who they are. They, you know, ultimately, we want to know that God loves us whoever we are, whatever we are, whatever we've done. There's enough forgiveness and enough love in the world. And so we come to a congregation like this to be fully known as God knows us by our, by our fellow uh, congregants. And so the, the fact is we want to try to push ourselves always to be more real and to be more free about who we are because then we know, ultimately we should know 
that we are lovable, God loves us, God loves everyone, and that we are worthy. No matter what we've done, no matter what's been done to us, no matter what we've been through, there's enough forgiveness and enough love that if we offer our truth, there are people who will hold us. And we're trying to create that kind of a religion and that kind of a community, not one that's just based in legalism and logical consistencies that cause everybody to lie to each other and pretend like they didn't go gambling last night or they didn't have a drink this week or they didn't do this or they, they didn't do that. But here's who I am. This is who I am. I'm trying to get through this life just like you, just like everybody else. I'm doing the best I can. You're doing the best you can. Be who you are. Trust yourself. Be honest. Ask for God's help when you need it. But do your best to be courageous and be true to yourself. Because when you're true to yourself and you can be true to others, it's a better life. It's an easier and honest life. But that doesn't mean that we can just, you know, what one psychologist calls it, truth dumping. Well, you know, I don't, you don't have to tell somebody, you're, that is the ugliest dress I've ever seen. You look appalling. You don't have to tell someone, I'm not, well, I'm not going to dinner with you tonight because you are the most boring individual I have ever met and I cannot stand spending all night. With you. We don't have to say everything, honestly. We can shave the truth here and there, but let us, let us speak the truth in love. Let us find ways to have the courage to speak the truth in love. I'm going to speak two truths born of love. We all lie and it's not always a sin. To lie. May ours be a religion that does not, is not based on a foolish consistency. May ours be a religion that can be honest about moral ambiguity and what it's really like to be alive. Let us remember and be part of a religion and be religious in a way that is grounded in love more than laws. Remembering that the goal is the same. The goal of all religions is the same. To so that we can be courageous and have integrity and compassion and generosity. But let us remember, in the, way, in the words of Wayne Arneson, the way is often hard, the path is never clear, and the stakes are very high. Take courage, because you are not alone. I love you. Amen. Has tried us, hope inside us will lead the way on the road from peace to giving. Love will guide us through the hard Love will guide us. We are your church, and we are proud to be your church, or at least a church that's having a positive impact on your life. I am personally blessed to be your minister, or at least a minister who you're allowing to speak into your life. I hope you'll support our ministry and share your love beyond belief by texting LOVEBB to 41444 or go to our website. But you can just text LOVEBB to 41444 and make your gift. It's wonderful. Thank you. Be blessed and be a blessing.